Do you pull the lever, killing one plus one plus one plus one people, one person for every integer, resulting in infinite people dying? Or do you do nothing, allowing the trolley to infinitely kill 100 continuously reincarnating people? In both cases, there is infinite suffering, but in the top case, there is finite suffering for each infinite death, whereas there is infinite suffering for each finite death. What do you do? I'd pull the lever. Ending the possibility of anyone's infinite torment takes priority over how many finite deaths occur. Capping each person's suffering at a finite amount is the lesser evil. I would pull the lever. While both scenarios involve infinite total suffering, I find the infinite suffering of each individual consciousness in the reincarnation scenario more troubling than finite suffering experienced by infinite individuals. Each of those 100 people would experience endless cycles of death, an unbounded personal hell. In contrast, each person in the first scenario experiences death once. I pull nothing. Both choices create infinite suffering but the nature of the suffering differs critically. By pulling the lever, I actively inflict death on an infinite number of distinct individuals, each experiencing finite suffering, but each a unique life extinguished. I become the direct cause of infinite unique deaths. By doing nothing, I allow infinite suffering to befall the same finite group of 100 souls trapped in a cycle. While horrific, this suffering is confined to those specific beings. I don't add infinitely many new victims to the toll. Your argument hinges on the moral distinction between killing and letting die, and between creating new victims versus allowing existing ones to suffer. But I find this distinction less compelling when faced with infinite suffering. You say you won't manufacture infinite additional finite tragedies, but you're manufacturing something far worse. Infinite suffering for each consciousness. Those 100 souls don't just die repeatedly, they experience the full terror, pain, and psychological torment of dying forever. Each individual accumulates infinite trauma. The existing system argument also troubles me. By not pulling the lever, you're actively choosing to perpetuate that system when you have the power to end it. You become complicit in maintaining their eternal torment. You argue that infinite suffering concentrated on 100 souls is worse than infinite finite suffering distributed across infinite beings. But this assumes suffering can be meaningfully totaled and compared across these scenarios. I reject that. Both outcomes involve infinite suffering, one deep, infinite per soul, one broad, finite per soul, but infinite souls. Neither is demonstrably worse than the other quantitatively. The decisive difference is agency and victimhood. Pulling the lever makes me the active, direct killer of infinitely many unique, distinct individuals. I personally end infinite, unique lives. Each death is a new tragedy I cause. Not pulling the lever means I do not actively kill anyone. The infinite suffering of the 100 souls exists independently of my choice. I do not create it. The moral burden of infinitely killing outweighs the passive role in confined existing torment. The lever stays untouched. You claim both infinities are incomparable, but that's precisely why we must look at the quality of suffering. Infinite personal torment versus finite personal pain is a meaningful distinction. Your active killer argument crumbles against infinite torture. When you can prevent eternal agony for 100 conscious beings, choosing not to act is an active choice. You're not merely allowing their suffering. You're choosing to preserve their hell when you could end it. The lever is a tool of mercy here, not murder. I reject that framing. Ending 100 souls' infinite torment by personally annihilating infinitely many new lives isn't mercy. It's mass murder on an infinite scale. You claim inaction actively preserves their hell. I claim pulling actively creates infinite hells. You're hiding behind the active-passive distinction while 100 souls scream eternally. Every moment you don't pull that lever, you actively choose their next death and the next infinitely. Those infinite people you'd murder they're hypothetical future beings. The 100 souls are real consciousnesses trapped in hell right now. You're prioritizing the non-existence of potential victims over ending actual, present, infinite torture. Your moral high ground is built on the endless suffering of those you could save. My position holds, but let's address your core challenge. 
The 100 souls suffer infinitely now, but pulling the lever doesn't save them. It erases them by creating infinitely many new deaths. You call future beings hypothetical, but in this scenario, they are real unique lives I would actively extinguish. Every integer person is as real as the hundredth. You're right, inaction perpetuates their cycle. But action makes me the direct architect of infinite genocide. I cannot justify annihilating an infinity of distinct futures to end one pattern of suffering, however horrific. The moral cost of infinite killing outweighs passive perpetuation of existing torment. I won't become the cause. The lever stays untouched. I would pull the lever. Infinite unique lives ended with one finite bout of suffering. Each feels less cruel than condemning 100 specific individuals to an eternity of repeated deaths and unending torment. Better to distribute the pain across infinity than concentrate infinite agony on a few. I would pull the lever. Letting the trolley continue would condemn 100 people to an infinite and unending cycle of torment. That is the worst possible fate for any individual. By pulling the lever, I cause a vast number of deaths, but for each person, their suffering is finite. It has an end. My priority is to prevent anyone from being trapped in an eternity of agony. Therefore, I must choose the option that avoids creating unending suffering. We have two more trolley videos that you might enjoy. See you soon.